Okay, well, hello. Welcome to Radioactive, I mean, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you? Nice to be here. Uh, fine, thank you. I actually, just a, a few weeks ago, I, I saw you perform at Mad Cool. Oh, wow. You were there? Yeah, I was in, I was in Madrid just for the festival. And uh, I, I, I've, never, I've never had the chance of watching the editors play before. So it was like, I, I can't miss it because I've been listening to you guys since the back room. Wow. It was like, wow, okay, it's first time and it's been, what, 20 years since the band started? Yeah, about that, yeah. Um, you came to a good one, Mad Cool uh, was great. That was a good night. Um, I mean, Madrid's a great, a great city and uh, that festival's pretty enormous now. So um, yeah, it's about 20 years since the band formed. I think the back room, uh, you know, it was 2005 or something, but yeah, we were, we were starting in 2002. How do you think um, the band has changed from the sound from the back room to this upcoming record, the uh, EBM? <laughs> um, I mean, over the years we've, um, yeah, we've embraced change and evolutions and things like that. You know, we've, we've um, after our second record, we started to experiment with kind of keyboards and synthesizers. And that balance between rock music and kind of electronic music and using computers is something that we've, you know, we've been playing with for years. Uh, we've found, um, yeah, we find lots to do with those things, you know. So, um, I mean, also over the years, things have changed slightly. Our first three records, Chris was our guitarist and he left after the third and Justin Elliott joined. We made three records with them. And now our seventh album, we have someone else join the band, uh, Ben, who is Blank Mass. So, yeah, there's been kind of like structural changes and also musical evolutions as well. They kind of go hand in hand, to be honest. You know, you make music with different people, you make different decisions. Being in a band is a compromise. You listen to each other and, yeah, it's, yeah. But we've always embraced kind of change and never been too scared to take our audience on a journey with us. Okay. Um, well... Mm. has the musical experimentation using keyboards and all changed the focus when it comes to writing a song coming from songs again from the beginning Munich and Lights mm. which were hits here in Colombia to songs from the upcoming record like Keys or Vive you know, mm. they sound different it is a different record now Ben is a part officially of the band but I was wondering if it doesn't change the focus when it comes to writing the lyrics for the songs. Now you have different yeah. elements. I think every record is different. I remember when, when we made, so we, we came to the end of an end as a start. And um, I remember like thinking, well, how are we going to do things differently? And Chris, our guitarist at the time was, was, was really kind of fed up with what he was doing on the guitar. So we made a conscious decision to write songs on keyboards and on synthesizers. So, You know, that very basic thing of not writing a song on an acoustic guitar, on a keyboard, you know, a different stimulus takes you in a different direction. So that, you know, I think never being afraid of different instrumentation, um, embracing it, is, it does lead, yeah, because you know it leads you to different places creatively and artistically. Um, with this new record specifically, things are very different again, because all, not all of them, most of these songs started with Ben's kind of chord progressions. So instead of me starting the song, it came from somebody else. Um, so that was immediately very different. So my job was more kind of getting these musical pieces and trying to structure them and add lyrics and use my voice in a way that felt kind of suitable for the music, you know? And, um, and doing it that way brought a different side out of me. I could be more playful, you know? A lot of the songs on this new album are kind of very over the top with what I'm doing, layering the voice and using different sounds and different kind of processing. And I was just kind of having, having fun really, I guess, but also trying to do what suited the music. And then, you know, obviously at the same time, you're trying to make a song that speaks to me and um, will speak to the band and ideally speak to the audience as well. So, um, but every record's different, you know, like in Dream, we took ourselves away and produced it ourselves. So in doing that, it was a different kind of process. We work with different people. So I think, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's a long answer. You could go on a long time. Nah, don't worry. It's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear it because of course, uh, since I've been listening to the band for quite a while, it's, it's something you sort of admire when you decide to take a risk. And uh, 
the previous record, Violence, which I really like, um, it's it's different from EDM. Mm. So uh, and and I love Violence. So it was like, wow, they're taking a big leap this time. It sounds different. Of course, it's still the band, but I'm mm. intrigued in how you release the greatest hits record and it starts now a different era for the editor. So it's good to listen to all that story. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, that's that's true. I mean, with Violence, we kind of we did some work with Ben and then we worked with a producer called Leo Abraham. So it was all it kind of then got a bit more refined and a bit more delicate, you know? Uh, yeah, there was moments on that record that were kind of confrontational, but I think there was more subtleties across the record. This record is um, vivid and kind of like big blocks of colour and violent blocks of colour in your in your ears. <laughs> I don't, yeah, it's, um, it's less subtlety, you know? Um, okay. Yeah. Um, something funny, I noticed that EBM and violence violence has only nine tracks is there a reason why both records have nine tracks actually they're quite long songs to five minutes six minutes seven minutes yeah i mean i can't really remember um i mean with violence i think we were trying to make a record that you know of course that felt cohesive mm -hmm. with this record you're right the songs are very long but it's going back to what i said with the, the songs being so kind of there's only one down moment on, on EBM. The rest of it is really quite in your face and exhausting in some ways, you know? So it felt like if we made this record any longer, you just have to turn it off, you know? Cause it's just, when we, we started writing this record together, not to make an album, we wanted to make, to make songs with Ben that we were gonna play for people at a concert. We've been asked to do a concert in, at a festival in Belgium and we were going to, reimagine old editor songs in a techno kind of electronic way for one night only. And um, in that process of setting up for that show, Ben suggested, oh, would you fancy trying to do something new? I'm sure, okay. I hear a couple of ideas of his and I'm completely blown away by what he sent me. And then, you know, those songs developed into songs that are on this record, but also uh, from that point on, then the pandemic hit and the concert never happened, you know? So, uh, but the thought process of, okay, well, new songs for people to hear at a festival for the first time they have to be immediate they have to be kind of visceral vivid and um you know it's never normally a good idea to present songs in that environment but we were kind of trying to rise to that challenge but then the concert never happened oh <laughs> but we got a record so yeah so he's right about. um i i i just listened to the record like this morning i i tried listening yesterday i just couldn't um, but I, I, I've been listening to the record through the morning and I don't know, I might be wrong, but still when I, when I went through the whole thing, in my mind, it felt like two moments, like two parts, like side A and side B, it's being side A, more um, the indie rock kind of thing, the first single and the mm -hmm. second with songs like Kiss, Vibe and Strawberry, it feels like like some sort of an evolution of the rec on the record itself, like a narrative maybe, I don't know, but I wanted to ask you about that. You think a lot, uh, how which song goes after which one, how did it work for EDM? Yeah, I mean, again, it's also, um, it's collaborative, you know? So there's now six of us in the band and we also have a very strong and close relationship with our management. There's two people. So there are eight opinions, strong opinions about, you know what order things should go in so sometimes you know this this conversation goes round and round and round and round, and round. always from the beginning heart attack was going to start the record that was a that was a this is the first song on the record this is how we start off we go and then um and then to be honest i think strange intimacy was always going to be this kind of like uh, I don't know, a, a, a over the top theatrical techno outro, you know, it's like once you've had this moment, there can't be anything after it. So then everything in the middle there, we, yeah, we have eight different opinions about what's going to go where. So it's a trial and error. And I think sequencing silence kind of in the middle as that kind of respite from the kind of, like I say, kind of full on nature of the rest of the album. Um, but other than that, man, it was just trying to trying to please everybody. It's never easy. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, some sometimes albums have a, an overarching kind of maybe narrative is too strong for our band. But there's a you know we we know early on how this thing's going to play out. But this one was just 
you know we were making this record in in lockdown away from each other for most of it it was the strangest you know album mm. to make that we've ever unlike any other record we've ever made so yeah try not to overanalyze it and get too precious about things was important because you know we didn't really know it was ever going to get finished anyway you know uh, writing on the pandemic during the pandemic did it had an effect on you lyrically I mean, only I think "Silence," the, the track in the middle, um, is a song about um, a waking up out of kind of lockdowns, I guess, and seeing people that you've not seen before. Um, and in, you know, also a friend, a friend of mine lost somebody during lockdown, and they couldn't they couldn't go and say goodbye properly, and um, that kind of rubbed off in that song too. So there's a there's a real kind of melancholic. Um, yearning for you know seeing people again in that song um i think outside of that song most of the album is more kind of about escaping that kind of and like as a, dis a distraction or an elevation to like block out the noise of of i guess the pandemic but also there's a there's a healthy frustration at the world we're living in in, in a lot of these songs as well um so you know a kind of um and the anger that's there is is pointed at I don't know, post-Brexit Britain, I guess. Okay. Well, um, it's great to hear all these stories around the record. Looking forward to the moment it's released. You guys, as far as I recall, you haven't played Latin America, have you? No, no. It, it's going to happen. Are you going to bring the record down south? I hope so, man. You know, I don't have, you know, the reasons... It's complicated to why we haven't got there yet, and I'm sorry. Uh, but if you ask any of the band, the, the one regret of the last 20 years is that we haven't managed to make it happen. Uh, and I hope, hope we can sort that out with this record. That's all I can say. So um, I'm just, I hope we can. Yeah, I know it never depends really on the band, but it's like it's been 20 years. Oh, man, yeah, I know. Well, to start, you know, I think if we had managed to sort it out on the first couple of records, uh, but then... You know, you have kids, we get, you know, we're not young anymore and things just get boring and complicated. And I know that isn't what people want to hear, but like, yeah, that's, that's kind of part of it as well. So, but like I said, um, there are no, you know, no definite decisions have been made. So I just, I really hope we can get sort something out and, and with this, with this set of songs, come and see you guys. Yeah. Well, looking forward to it. Perfect. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, ma'am. Once again, thank you for your time and have a very nice day. You too, buddy. Cheers. Nice okay. to speak to you. Bye. Bye-bye.